First of all, you have to say here, Qatar Airways showing some deal-making swagger and taking this 25% stake in Virgin Australia. Tell me how this deal came together and what both sides are seeking to achieve. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Dan. Well, you're right. I mean, this is the latest equity investment of the Qatari flag carrier, which we know has spread its investments far and wide. It is currently the 10% stakeholder in Hong Kong's Cathay Pacific. It has 10% of the largest airline on the South American continent, LATAM. It is the single largest shareholder of IAG with a 25% stake in the parent company of BA, Iberia, Vueling, Level, Aer Lingus. There are a few other investments dotted around, not least the one last month announced 25% in Aer Link, one of the uh, most profitable airlines uh, in South Africa and on the African continent. And now this, Australia, which we know is an important market for the airline. The CEO, Badr Almir, told you himself that it is a priority and, and Australia as a key market is somewhere where Qatar has really wanted to expand that footprint. But in recent years, not least since before, uh, just after, sorry, the pandemic, Australia has been a little protectionist in just how liberal it can be in terms of allowing foreign carriers to operate uh, to the market that is dominated by Qantas. And so this next move in order to expand and secure its presence into Australia, we will see this tie up between Qatar Airways and Virgin Australia, the second largest airline in Australia. They have around 100 aircraft. And this will ultimately, well, we've heard from the CEO of Virgin Australia, benefit the Australian consumers by strengthening up the competition because there really is a struggling landscape now. We've lost two Australian airlines just this year, Regional Express and Bonza. Uh, that leads to an ever growing dominant Qantas but also it's good, of course, for the Qataris who are set to strengthen their presence in the Australian market, no doubt strengthen their influence and gain some crucial access into a route that continues to be incredibly lucrative to airlines who operate on that famous kangaroo route. Alex, as you say, this has the potential to reshape the competition in Australia. And that, of course, raises questions about the regulatory side. Do you think this deal will be approved by the Foreign Investment Review Board and the ACCC without significant conditions? I think what we've seen over the, the last few hours ever since this, this deal was announced is a, a pretty uh, well-received news from the Australian consumers who believe that it is in their interest. They think that a Qatar-backed Virgin Australia is good for Australian jobs, is good for the aviation sector locally, and good for the economy. But also, we know that this is a deal that ultimately should be playing by the rules. Uh, the deal that they are coming to between Qatar Airways and Virgin Australia is for an undisclosed amount for now. And we understand that Virgin Australia, uh, the owners, Bain, were potentially looking at an IPO. This is separate to that. But any deal that is by the rules and that is supposedly going to champion consumers, I think is one that is set to pass. And I've spoken to a few sources over the last few hours who believe that this is something that will make it through those necessary reviews. The conditions, of course, are likely to be there. But again, it's, it's 2024. We are in a, a period where open skies is something that should be championed. And it's always unusual when we see these countries like Australia and even more recently Canada, India push against that trend and become a little more protectionist. That's not good for the consumers. These kind of deals that strengthen the competitive landscape against an ever-dominant Qantas is something that will be good for consumers and for airfares going forward.